everything you need to know about breastfeeding. Breastfeeding provides an infant with essential calories, vitamins, minerals, and other nutrients for optimal growth, health, and development. Breastfeeding is beneficial to both a mother and her infant and also offers an important opportunity for the pair to bond. Breastfeeding, also called nursing, is the process of feeding a mother's breast milk to her infant, either directly from the breast or by expressing, pumping out, the milk from the breast and bottle feeding it to the infant. Breastfeeding and breast milk provide an infant with calories and nutrients, including macronutrients, fat, protein, and carbohydrates, and micronutrients, vitamins and minerals. According to the American Academy of Pediatrics, AAP, policy statement on breastfeeding, women who don't have health problems should exclusively breastfeed their infants for at least the first six months after birth. The AAP suggests that, if possible, a woman should try to continue breastfeeding her infant for up to 12 months, while adding other foods, because of the benefits to both the mother and the infant. Although breastfeeding is the recommended method for feeding infants, and breast milk provides most of the nutrients an infant needs, it does not provide infants with adequate vitamin D. What are the benefits of breastfeeding? Research shows that breastfeeding offers many health benefits for infants and mothers, as well as potential economic and environmental benefits for communities. Breastfeeding provides essential nutrition. Among its other known health benefits are some protection against common childhood infections and better survival during a baby's first year, including a lower risk of sudden infant death syndrome. Research also shows that very early skin-to-skin -skin contact and suckling may have physical and emotional benefits. Other studies suggest that breastfeeding may reduce the risk for certain allergic diseases, asthma, obesity, and type 2 diabetes. It also may help improve an infant's cognitive development. However, more research is needed to confirm these findings. What are the recommendations for breastfeeding? In the United States, the American Academy of Pediatrics currently recommends. Infants should be fed breast milk exclusively for the first six months after birth. Exclusive breastfeeding means that the infant does not receive any additional foods, except vitamin D, or fluids unless medically recommended. After the first six months and until the infant is one year old, the AAP recommends that the mother continue breastfeeding while gradually introducing solid foods into the infant's diet. After one year, breastfeeding can be continued if mutually desired by the mother and her infant. The World Health Organization currently promotes as a global public health recommendation that infants be exclusively breastfed for the first six months after birth to achieve optimal growth, development, and health. After the first six months, to meet their evolving nutritional requirements, infants should receive nutritionally adequate and safe complementary foods while breastfeeding continues for up to two years of age or beyond. How do I breastfeed? There are many mothers' groups, health organizations, and healthcare provider associations that provide very detailed information and support on how to breastfeed. The following overview is provided for information only. It is not meant to take the place of a healthcare provider or lactation consultant's advice or recommendation. Infants who are hungry will nuzzle against their mother's breast and make sucking motions or will put their hands in their mouths. During the first weeks after birth, you may nurse your infant often, perhaps as often as 8 to 12 times in 24 hours. After your infant is born, follow these tips for getting started. Breastfeed your infant for the first time as soon as possible after the infant is born. Ask at the hospital whether an on-site lactation consultant is available to assist you. Request that the hospital staff not feed your infant any other foods or formula unless it is medically necessary. Allow your infant to stay with you throughout the day and night at the hospital so that you can breastfeed often. If this is not possible, ask the nurses to bring your infant to you each time for breastfeeding. Avoid giving your infant pacifiers or artificial nipples so that the infant gets used to latching onto just your breast. Infants will naturally move their head while looking and feeling for a breast to feed. There are many ways to start feeding your infant, and the best approach is the one that works for you and your infant. The steps below can help with getting your infant to latch onto the breast for feeding. Hold your infant against your bare chest. Dress your infant in only a diaper to ensure skin-to-skin -skin contact. Keep your infant upright, with his or her head directly under your chin. 
Support your infant's neck and shoulders with one hand and his or her hips with your other hand. Your infant may try to move around to find your breast. Your infant's head should be slightly tilted back to make nursing and swallowing easier. When his or her head is tilted back and the mouth is open, the tongue will naturally be down in the mouth to allow the breast to go on top of it. At first, allow your breast to hang naturally. Your infant may open his or her mouth when your nipple is near his or her mouth. You also can gently guide the infant to latch onto your nipple. While your infant is feeding, his or her nostrils may flare to breathe in air. Do not panic, this flaring is normal. Your infant can breathe normally while breastfeeding. As your infant tilts backward, support his or her upper back and shoulders with the palm of your hand and gently pull your infant close. A good latch is important for both effective breastfeeding and your own comfort. Review the following signs to determine whether your infant has a good latch. The latch feels comfortable and does not hurt or pinch. How it feels is a more important sign of a good latch than how it looks. Your infant does not need to turn his or her head while feeding. His or her chest is close to your body. You see little or no areola, which is the dark colored skin on the breast that surrounds the nipple. Depending on the size of your areola and the size of your infant's mouth, you may see a small amount of areola. If more areola is showing, it should seem that more is above your infant's lip and less is below. Your infant's mouth will be filled with breast when in the best latch position. Your infant's tongue is cupped under the breast, although you might not see it. You can hear or see your infant swallowing. Because some babies swallow so quietly, the only way of knowing that they are swallowing is when you hear or see a pause in their breathing. Your infant's ears wiggle slightly. Your infant's lips turn outward, similar to fish lips, not inward. You may not even see your infant's bottom lip. Your infant's chin touches your breast. To break the suction and end a breastfeeding session, insert a clean finger between your breast and your infant's gums. After you hear a soft pop, pull your nipple out of your infant's mouth. You should allow your infant to set his or her own nursing pattern. Many newborns will feed for 10 to 15 minutes on each breast. If your infant wants to nurse for a much longer period, say 30 minutes or longer on each breast, he or she may not be getting enough milk. What is weaning and how do I do it? Weaning is the process of switching an infant's diet from breast milk or formula to other foods and fluids. In most cases, choosing when to wean is a personal decision. It might be influenced by a return to work, the mother's or infant's health, or just a feeling that the time is right. Weaning an infant is a gradual process. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommends feeding infants only breast milk for the first six months after birth. After six months, the AAP recommends a combination of solid foods and breast milk until the infant is at least one year old. The Academy advises against giving cow's milk to children younger than one year old. You may have difficulty determining how much to feed your child and when to start introducing solid foods. The general guidance below, as reported by the National Library of Medicine, demonstrates the process of weaning for infants up to six months of age. You should speak with your infant's health care provider before attempting to wean your infant to make sure that he or she is ready for weaning and for complete guidance on weaning birth to four months of age. During the first four to six months, infants need only breast milk or formula to meet their nutritional needs. If breastfeeding, a newborn may need to nurse eight to 12 times per day. By four months of age, an infant may need to nurse only four to six times per day. By comparison, formula-fed infants may need to be fed about six to eight times per day, with newborns consuming about two to three ounces per feeding. The number of feedings will decrease as the infant gets older, similar to breastfeeding. 4 to 6 months of age. At 4 to 6 months of age, an infant needs to consume 28 to 45 ounces of breast milk or formula per day and often is ready to start being introduced to solid food. Starting solid foods too soon can be hazardous, so an infant should not be fed solid food until he or she is physically ready. Start solid feedings, one or two tablespoons, of iron-fortified infant rice cereal mixed with breast milk or formula, stirred to a thin consistency. Once the infant is eating rice cereal regularly, you may introduce other iron-fortified instant cereals. 
Only introduce one new cereal per week so that intolerance or possible allergies can be monitored. How do I pump and store breast milk? There are many mothers' groups, health organizations, and healthcare provider associations that provide very detailed information and support on how to pump breast milk. The following overview is provided for information only. It is not meant to take the place of a healthcare provider or lactation consultant's advice or recommendation. If you are unable to breastfeed your infant directly, it is important to remove milk during the times that you would normally feed your infant. Removing milk from your breasts is called expressing the milk. Expressing milk will help you to continue making milk. Before expressing breast milk, wash your hands thoroughly. Only express milk when you are in a clean area. You do not need to wash your breasts or nipples before expressing milk. If you need help to get your milk flowing, placing an item of your infants near to you often works. There are three methods for expressing your breast milk. Hand expression. For hand expression, you use your hand to manually massage and compress your breast to remove milk. Manual pump. To operate a manual pump, you use your hand and wrist to operate a handheld pumping device that removes milk from your breast. Electric breast pump. An electric breast pump runs on a battery or through an outlet plug. It can pump milk from one breast or from both breasts at the same time. Breast milk can be stored in clean glass bottles or hard, BPA-free plastic bottles with tight-fitting lids. After pumping, refrigerate or freeze milk immediately. You should store milk in small batches, 2-4 to four ounces, depending on the amount that you normally feed your infant at one time. For refrigeration, storage for as long as 5 to 8 days is acceptable only for very clean expressed milk. If freezing, store the milk in small, 2 ounce to 4 ounce batches. Frozen milk is good for 3 to 6 months. After thawing, use milk within 24 hours and do not refreeze it because of the risk of contamination.